everybody. Welcome. My name is Kathy McPherson. Very happy to have you with us for today for uh, badging in your online course. Our objectives today are to identify the roles of badging in society and online. We're going to discuss the implications of the open badges infrastructure on digital badges and e-learning. And we're going to check out quickly the anatomy and design of badges. Um, before we start, can we go around and just kind of unmute yourself and just like to have everybody check in and say hello. Real glad to have you with us. So Judy, you want to start us off? Can you tell us who's with us today? Hi, Alana. Really, like, really great to have you with us. Alana Edwards is with us in Jupiter. She doesn't have a microphone, but she's chatting in. Thanks very much. Anybody else? No. No? Okay. All right, we'll just keep going then. There's one back here. It's I can hear somebody's microphone. You might as well say hello. <laughs> I think that's us. Yeah, I think so. Is anybody participating in Boca right now or no? Uh, Craig? Yes. Hi, Craig. And David Mann is in here with me as well, although we're multitasking. Okay. All right, great. Well, it's great to have you all with us. So, um, okay, I need you guys to um, un to go ahead and mute yourselves then. Thanks. Um, so what can we infer from this picture? If you can go ahead and chat in, if you've got some uh, input for us, who are these folks? What are their affiliations? What has each one of them achieved? Um, who has more authority and how do you know? What would you say just by looking at them? As a teacher, I don't have a problem with awkward silence. It's a good thinking thing. And when it's videoed, we can edit out the quiet part. So that's not a problem at all. Great, thanks, Alana. We've got a Boy Scout with a lot of badges. And then, yep, we've got someone in the military and he's got more badges and honors. Thank you so much, Alana, I appreciate that. Um, I guess I have to do this this way. Okay, this is in fact uh, U.S. Army Brigadier General Sean P. Mulholland. Uh, at the time, he was the commander of Special Operations uh, Command South. And this is my buddy Luke Mata, who is a big kid now, but at the time he was a Boy Scout Tenderfoot in Troop 412. Um, and we can see who they are. We can identify them by what is what the sig um, insignia is on their uniforms are, literally their badges, their pins, and their um, ranks and things. The more you know about it, the more clearly it's identifiable. So badges, they symbolize, even in society, affiliation. So the badge on the left uh, would be the Department of Corrections in the state of Arizona. We can see that this is a Boy Scout and we know that this is a U.S. Army general. And um, when you go to a, just a regular conference, they give you a badge to identify not just your name, but where you come from. So which college you're representing or what organization you're with. Badges also symbolize achievement. Um, clearly this uh, Department of Corrections officer has some level of achievement. Um, Luke has his, the general has his, and um, then if some of us might be able to relate to remember back to uh, swimming lesson days when the American Red Cross or the YMCA would give us literal badges for the different levels of uh, swim achievement that we would get. Sometimes you would get a card, sometimes it would be a badge, but they signified specific levels of achievement. Um, badges also symbolize authority or rank. And so um, if you're able to uh, unmute, Craig, thanks for coming in. It's great to see you. Um, if you're able to unmute, let me ask you this. Let's say you're having a heart attack. Of If you had um, all the people in the room had these, these badges on them or this um, identification, who in the room would you feel most comfortable letting you work on if you had a heart attack? 
clearly it would be the person who has the first aid and CPR training. That would be the person that you would want to work on you if you had a heart attack. Now, maybe the deputy would have it. Maybe the Boy Scout would have it. You never know. But it's clear what that person has accomplished because they clearly have the CPR and first aid badge on them. So, okay. Um, a lot of apps online, they also award digital badges. Um, and these are kind of fun. They're audible is, you can listen to the books online. And when you do, you log in, you've got different ones and they encourage you for different kinds of interaction. So the first one here, the closer, you get it when you listen to five complete books start to finish. Um, you get the stack badge when you've got 50 books in your library and the social butterfly means that you've shared your listening habits five times. So these badges encourage specific behaviors that the owners of the badges want to reinforce. Um, TripAdvisor also has them. You log into TripAdvisor and you do your things, you do a review. Um, this one, 100 people read my one article and I can keep continuing in the app to earn more badges. If I do a luxury hotel, yeah, like that's really gonna happen. <laughs> um, if I review a restaurant, you know, so there's, there's that. Waze does the same thing. I don't know if you guys know Waze, but it's a really great um, app for, you get, you can log in for traffic and to see how it's going on the route that you're taking to work. I use this all the time and you get um, levels in ways. You get points um, for uh, how many miles you travel using the app. You get points for reporting incidents in the traffic. And if you drive over goodies, you get points for that too. Okay, um, apps that don't have digital badges are also worth noting. Facebook doesn't have it, Instagram doesn't have it, and Twitter doesn't have it. And there's a reason for that. Um, on those, websites or on those apps, when you share a picture or a video or you tweet something, you get instant feedback when somebody likes it. Um, when somebody views it, shares it, follows it, you hear every single incident, every single time, and you get numbers that tell you how many people have done that. In this case, popularity is the only goal. There's, since it's real-time statistics that measure the popularity, there's no need for badges because there's only one skill, one specific thing that they're measuring. So um, how do badges affect the users? Um, for one thing, they increase uh, socialization or community among the users. Uh, they increase your sense of affiliation or belonging. So when I speak to somebody else who uses the Waze app, they start to get excited all of a sudden. Yeah, I use it too, it's really great. Um, or when I tell someone about Audible, about um, the audiobooks, that's the word I was looking for. They get excited too. You know, yes, I use it, it's really great. I've been using it for a long time. It also motivates, the badges also motivate users to engage in the desired activity. And um, they acknowledge people who are experienced in it. So if I've been using Audible for a really long time, um, I might be able to say, oh yeah, they have this particular book and it's great, or this particular um, narrator, I would recommend this person over that person. It just uh, recognizes different levels of achievement. So how do these apply to e-learning? Again, they build affiliation, they build achievement, they, they're visual representations of specific achievement, and they build up some kind of authority or rank. Now, over time, this has really increased, and I'm going to show you um, how this has grown. First question, uh, who can see the badges? When you're in Canvas, if you've received badges um, and you tell the app that you want, when you receive a badge and you tell the app that you want it to show on your profile, it will show up in your profile. Um, you also have the ability to create an e-portfolio. Um, I have not had the sophisticated experience of doing that yet, but we're getting there. Um, portfolium is a specific uh, group or company that 
sponsors portfolios and we're, we're working on that. But just to know this is in the works. Now people can see the badge on your, on your profile. And there's also this ability to show your badge on the Open Badges infrastructure. One of the most popular ones is this Mozilla backpack. And it's going to be growing. This, this whole thing is going to be growing because uh, LinkedIn, the company that does the professional networking, just bought the company Linda, which does a lot of online excuse me, online uh, self-paced instruction. And so if I want to, one of the things that I have, like I've put up all my, my badges here onto my Mozilla backpack, uh, backpack page. One of the ones that I'm most proud of is this Adobe Education Trainer one. I had to work really hard to get that. These are all my apps. Um, they show who issued them. They sh they're all connected to metadata. So you can see that this one is just a membership one. Credly issued it. Um, this one is an Adobe Education Trainer one. The issuer for that was actually Adobe Education. And then this one is um, Canva badges. The one that I'm most proud of is this Adobe Education Trainer. I had to, re I had to work about 70 hours to do that one. Um, it shows that I earned a significant credential from a respected company, which is Adobe. Um, so remember, it's affiliation, achievement, and authority. Now, if I go into my LinkedIn, I can share this out on LinkedIn, and there are other people who have achieved the same badge. It tells you here in the metadata, what you had to do, 75 hour online course focused on Adobe product training, and it gives you the full course details at this link. Now, what are the implications of this? What are the implications of open badges in online learning? Um, yeah, it's fun and it's pretty, but it can have very strong implications. Um, can, are we able to speak together yet or um, chat about it online? I would like to give you guys a, a minute to speak out if you can. Speak out about what? Well, um, do you see any sort of implications for uh, higher education when it comes to open, open badges? Students being able to share their achievements? Yeah, I, I assume it would help motivate some students at least that they hear probably enjoy receiving the badges and showing them off to so really create a like you're saying the fit the affiliation the community but also have the the video game uh background mindset where it's fun to earn rewards through yep. the technology absolutely thanks thank you craig appreciate that um, yep, Alana says you can learn about your students' interests. Um, that's all very true, and that's what I was thinking when I first looked into this, but there's more. Um, what I'm discovering now is that students have now all kinds of different abilities and skills that companies are looking for. So a student might have a skill or ability in, um, uh, excuse me, Photoshop, uh, JavaScript. Photoshop is an art one. JavaScript is a web design one, um, coding. Uh, some They might have an, another skill in, um, I don't know, maybe Red Cross training kind of a thing. They might have skills in um, specific like professional development training or other specific kinds of things. When they go out into the workforce, they've got their degree and they've also got their um, portfolio that they come out of college with and they've got their skills in their resume. But they also have these visual 
um, representations with metadata that show specifically what actual skills they have. Um, and if the, if the badges are designed correctly, the corporations have the ability to know specifically what skills and what levels that those students have. And what we're finding now is that the companies are actually using search tools to go out onto thing, into the open badges infrastructure, into social media, into um, the internet, looking for students, people who have specific skills. And so they're recruiting, they are actively recruiting, going out and looking for folks that have specialized actual skills. Um, as I say, I'm really just the tip of the iceberg on this, but it's very, very exciting. Um, it really gives us, gives the students a, a chance to show off exactly what their skill levels are. Um, because when they, what I've read and heard about is that when they go out into the workforce, there is a uh, kind of a disconnect between, I've got this big degree, but how does the company know what my actual skill level is. Now, another implication when you're building the badge is, uh-oh, that didn't work. Sorry, I'm gonna do a little searching here. Um, one of the other implications is, what does it mean um, when you receive a particular badge? Okay, you've got the metadata that's attached to the particular badge. You've got the badge name, the description, the criteria that it takes to earn it, the issuer, who was it that issued this badge, what was the evidence that, that they actually earned it, when was it issued, what were the standards, and what are the tags. Now, for example, I'm gonna pull up a little, we've been using, um, Canva badges in our e-certification workshop. It's been going very, very well. Um, we have found that folks are really, it's been uh, motivating for them. They've been interacting a lot with it. And, um, whoops, let me go back one more page. For each of the modules that we have, folks have been earning these particular badges. Uh, when they finally get it, you get this e-certification badge. And the metadata behind it, it whoops, I'm not supposed to push show students, sorry about that. Um, the metadata behind it is that it marks the completion of the initial Center for E-Learning Professional Development Workshop. It shows that um, how many hours it generally takes to earn this badge, which is significant. And it shows um, that the Florida Atlantic University Center for E-Learning is the one that, that issued it. So that's pretty significant. You go out into the community that you're in and you've got this, this behind you. Um, badge design in itself is a whole nother workshop. There's um, Canva badges is the tool that we've been using. It offers simple design choices, lots of colors, etc. cetera. Um, we're not gonna continue to use Canva badges for too much longer because it um, isn't, it's literally one guy in his house supporting <laughs> Canva badges. But we're gonna move up to something called Credly pretty soon. And, um, they're just a bigger thing. There are a lot of different ones that you can use. There's there's all kinds of different different groups to use, and some we, because we use um, Canvas, we want one that's supported by the actual learning management system. It's a monster topic, um, and part of it is that you've got how do you want to be represented? Uh, what's the the organization behind it? And how do you want to, like, we've got this shadow design here, we've got the basic um, background, and we've got these little pieces. So academic identity for this one, you've got an apple, which stands for academia, and then the DNA standing for your identity, okay? Um, 
we poured over these images for weeks. We wanted the outer colors to be the same with the FAU colors, and we wanted to use simple expressive images. Um, the shadowing is a Willie Freeman favorite element, and uh, I think that's pretty cool. But it's it's kind of, once it gets out there, it's gonna be something that represents your organization and your, your group for a long time. So you really wanna be careful about it. Um, I don't really wanna wrap up yet. I wanna see if, if you all have any questions or um, issues that, that you wanted to bring out or discuss. Are there any free resources to create your own badges? Yes, Canva badges is free. Um, and you can basically Google it. I actually have a video that shows how quick it is to do it once you, once you get started with it. Um, it's really pretty, once you decide what the image is that you wanna, wanna create, you can either design it and then upload it into the tool or there are different tools within the, the app that you can pick to design it. And it's very, it's very Googleable how to do it. Anything else, questions, concerns? We've had some pushback on it. We've had some folks say, we don't care about this. We don't think anybody in academia is gonna care about it. Um, I'm happy to, to discuss that if, if that's kind of what's happening in your head too. Do, um, are there any, is it like a total free for all with badges? Or are there, is there anyone that like tries to put standards on them or anything? It's a really good question. Um, um, I think that's where it goes back to the implications. What I would say is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my, my own little video up here because, yeah, I think, I think it goes back to what's the metadata? You know, um, if I'm in the other question that Alana has with how, was how many badges are too many badges? Um, I think it's important to realize who you are as the, the person who's issuing them. So for the, for example, for the center of e-learning, we could go crazy and create all kinds of badge. We're very, very creative people. You know, we could do the having a smile today badge <laughs> or the um, logging in one time badge kind of a thing. But you want to be a credible source. So it's kind of one, when you realize what it is that it's actually standing for, I don't know if that's making any sense. If you, if I, it, 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 val, okay, so if you look at it as currency or value, um, one of the webinars that I attended, they talked about there was an there was an ancient uh, society that had this one big rock that was a piece of currency, and it just wasn't redeemable anywhere. It wasn't um, only that society understood the value of owning that big giant rock. You couldn't exchange it. These are kind of like that. You know, you want it to be strong enough that it stands for something. Like if you go back to, um, let's see. Okay, so if we go back to these, the like the Red Cross ones. When I was a kid, I wanted the next one. I wanted to be a lifeguard. And I was excited for the day that I would be old enough and strong enough to learn, earn my lifeguard badge. Um, but I had to get there. So the, the American Red Cross had their standards and they still do of who's a beginner, how do you get to advanced, how do you get to intermediate, then you become lifeguard, then you become water safety instructor. You know, there's all these different levels that you can get to and they're all important and they're all, the person that's, the people that set the standards was the American Red Cross. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what the Center for E-Learning is doing, is we are in the slow process of building what are our badges specifically going to stand for. We built the ones that we're using in the Center for E-Learning to stand for specific modules, but I predict that five years from now, there's going to be badges for advanced level, 
um, quality matters certification or video production or um, data processing within the learning environment or a small group expert kind of a thing. There's all these different skills that, that we're going to be helping people to develop. You know, um, accessibility expert or all these different things. And starting at the beginning is fine. And where you get the credentials from, the where you get the value from is the metadata behind it. The more time that I put into earning that, and the the more integrity that the organization has that gave it to me, the more valuable it is. So if the if I have an American Red Cross CPR AED badge on, you can be sure that I was trained to do specific things. But they also, I also know that it had to be uh, renewed every year because somebody's life is in your hands and you don't want to have like, oh, I learned it five years ago. Here, let me try to save your life, you know. Um, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yes. It, it, yeah, it, it's built up on organizational credibility. So... If I start handing out, making my own badges and handing my class, it might be a long time before anyone recognizes a Craig Reine set of badges for my classes to be, or never. <laughs> but if I have them through FAU somehow, they would have a different, more credibility behind them. Right. And, you know, I don't, I think that there's, there's that balance there of we have to start someplace. And so initially, to do it within your class, that it's perfectly legitimate to do that, that you're motivating your students, that they're, you're building community in there, um, and they can go ahead and within their Canvas profile be very proud that they accomplished specific goals that you set out for them. Um, absolutely. I say go for it. And as as the time goes on, you kind of say, okay, these are, these represent even higher levels of skill to where your students would say, all right, this is stuff that I want the outside world to know about. I'm going to post this up and before long, you are actually a recognized, you already are a recognized authority in your field. You know, if you're able to say this person has accomplished this sp specific level of skill in this particular task, I mean, that's really great. They can post that out there and, and they have something that they can share with their networking. More and more things are going, vi um, having visual represent representation um, and in smaller and smaller pieces. So, you know, I say go for it. Might as well give it a try, and I'd be happy to to share out the, even though Canva Badges is kind of drifting, it's a really good place to start because it's very, very supported within the Canvas um, learning management system. Um, yes, and you're sharing ideas like um, advanced presentation skills and concise writing. Oh, my gosh. If, if you want to write some writing skills badges, <laughs> I think that would be very well received by a lot of teachers. Boy, anything to get people improving their writing skills. I say go for it. <laughs> you know, I, I was working on a course the other day with uh, engineering and they're, they're doing literal stuff in their labs and everything. And it's like, wow, you know, our language skills. Companies want you want people with specific levels of proficiency in, in language and things, and how are you going to tell the rest of the world that you're good at that? You know, even go to the standards within your your field and start building badges to say, the education, adult education, um, excuse me, the education leadership is using portfolios. They, they we, we always have, but this is, when it's digital, it's it's um it can be exchanged in uh if you think about it as currency you know 
Um, okay, I feel like I'm rambling here. Is uh, I know, and it's the first day of school, so it, it's a really a big deal that you all came to participate today. Really, very very much appreciated. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Um, so for our wrap up, we said that badges symbolize affiliation and achievement and authority. And OBI stands for Open Badges Infrastructure. And um, that badges do motivate, they really do. Um, I know that there's a particular Briggs Myers personality style that is not motivated by it, but a lot of people are, um, they're cool and they are also valuable depending on what they stand for. Um, if you're interested in further learning, there's a number of articles uh, related to badging in higher education. And coming up, the Center for E-Learning, we have some, some great professional development sessions on, excuse me, on the horizon. Uh, next week will be teacher presence, uh, building that sense of community and having the, the instructor be the leader there. Uh, September 11th, we start our new fall e-certification workshop, and we're going to do our, our orientation that day. The September 18th, we're excited. The Center for E-Learning will be joining a number of folks for um, our e-learning community of practice at the FDLA 2017 conference. So we're going to come back on September 18th and talk about what were some of the new cool things that we got from that. And then on the 28th, we'll be talking about motivating learners through assessment. And I'll probably refer back to badges again, too, for that one. So we hope you all will join us for those. We really, really thank you for your time again. Um, being here on the first day of school is especially very, very much appreciated. And I uh, hope you all have a, have a really great day. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy.